The locally produced documentary film Sculpting This Earth is set to have its world premiere screening later this week at the Ribia Castile Solo Studios. Now, the 95-minute film shows internationally acclaimed Stellenbosch-based artist Stradom van der Merwe at work in the landscape, making artwork usually mostly using natural materials found on site in a range of beautiful natural settings over the course of a year. Now, the film is the first feature documentary globally about land art from the Southern Hemisphere. So for more, and I hate to cut out from it, but we want to speak to the artist. We're joined now by internationally acclaimed artist Stradom van der Merwe. Such an absolute honor and a pleasure to have you. Welcome to Morning Live, Stradom. Fantastic. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful. So firstly, please explain um, to those of us, the uninitiated, um, you know, what exactly is land art and what is its significance? That's right, yeah. Um, land art is a process where you use the material that you find in the landscape. So it's the, the rocks or the sticks or the leaves or with water. And with that material, you then create a work. So that work doesn't last for long. So most of the time it's ephemeral work and it's been taken back by nature. Let's say you do something on the beach and the high tide comes in, the tide will wash it away. So the most important thing about this kind of art form is obviously the documentation because you want to show the audience what you've done because they most of the time they're not there to see what you created. So it's ephemeral work, it doesn't last for long and it's about the beauty of the landscape, the beauty of nature. So it's so much different and, and with people sometimes make the mistake um, when you talk about a landscape artist where you think well, I don't make paintings of the landscape or watercolors of the landscape and I don't do gardens, but I rather um, abstractly use the material that I find in the landscape. And I think the significance of, of this kind of art movement as well is that it puts so much emphasis on the beauty of nature and it makes us re-appreciate what we have around us. And if you want to go even further, it also talks about global warming and all these issues about climate change that's happening at the moment, if you want to believe in that. It is absolutely stunning. And, and it's interesting that you say it doesn't last for long because as we were watching it, uh, you know, members of the crew said, but then the wind comes and just blows it all away. So, you know, it's interesting that you make that point because it is such painstaking work and yet it is fleeting. That's right, exactly. Yeah, I, I think for an artist like myself, I think the process of making the work, of being there in nature, alone, on your own, your connection with nature and connection with that site makes it such a special moment while you're creating the work and what's happening inside you, in your mind, in your body, the relation with that moment. So by the time that you finish with the work, you actually finished with what you've done and you can put an end to it. And I think that's why it's easy for an artist to walk away from that because you've experienced that wonderful inner that happened within you. But, but you know, uh, the realities of life is that you have to make a living and well, people are interested to see what you do. And that's where the most important part, the documentation coming. And that's why we're so fortunate to have been able to make this film Sculpting This Earth so where people can actually see how I create the work and that they can be part of the experience of happening in nature, which most people can't experience or see. And, and, and we're going to come to the film in just a moment, but I'm, I'm curious uh, to understand, you know, usually as human beings, we tend to have sentimental attachments, especially to our work. And uh, was it always the case for you where you always recognize that, listen, uh, this is something that I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to love it, but hey, it's not going to last? Uh, or is this something that, you know, eventually you got to understand and make peace with? Uh, how has that journey been? Yes, yes. Well, I, I think the, 
let's take it from the beginning as, as a day of work, if you want to put it that way, start for me, is, is that I don't really actually know what I'm going to do because my material, my inspiration is in nature. So I can't sit in my house or in my studio and decide, okay, I'm going to put 10 stones in half a circle on the beach today because I don't know what the circumstances on the beach is and I don't know what the stones will look like, if it's high tide, low tide. So the, the wonderful thing for an artist and I think for a creative person in, in, in my case is to take your camera and your tripod and you go for a walk in nature. And then you eventually find a spot and you realize, well, here's a possibility to do something. And then I think very important, you have to clear your mind of all the worldly things that happened around you. And you have to concentrate and try to build up a relation with that space that you find yourself in. And then you start to realize, well, the space only exists because of its surrounding areas. The surrounding areas got an influence on that space. And then you start to come up with an idea of what you maybe want to make. And it has happened so often that I start to make an idea and after a while I realize, you know, maybe I'm trying to put my own ego onto the landscape and that doesn't work because we, we are nature. We are part of nature. And rather to make a work that works with nature, that becomes site specific for that moment that you work in there. And I think when you went through all those processes and all those things, then when you eventually made the work and you finished it, it is such a, a wonderful experience in you. That is why you then eventually can, can stand up and that you can walk away from it. And But with that, depending maybe on the commission or the work that you're doing, there can be a, a, deep, a deeper um, issue or certain goals that you want to achieve with that work. Mm. Straight up, let's talk about the film now and, you know, uh, watching that, uh, one of the things that uh, I was questioned about in my mind is documenting all of this work. And um, it obviously is an honour for you to be the subject of such a wonderful project. So what exactly can viewers expect in terms of the format, the content, you know, uh, what has been captured in this film? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's a very long process, obviously. First, first it was the planning to, to decide, okay, how are we going to do? And then we decided, well, you know, um, a year consists of four seasons. So, so how about we do it from summer to summer? And for an artist like me that works in nature, it's absolutely the perfect palette to work on because you've got the summer colors and then you get into the wonderful autumn colors where the colors of the leaves change and then you get to the cold winter colors which everything is gray and dark and then you get to the wonderful bright colors of spring and then back to summer so we decided for the process of the film we want to do it over a year and and then well then we decided okay well we have to find the money to do that because as you know it's really expensive to make it and, and we were so fortunate that we that we find somebody that was that we believed in our project and that we believed in the art form and believed that it was important that people should actually see and experience what I do. And then, and then we started with the process. And you know, as for television or, or for film, um, you have to redo many of the shoots over and over again because it's really important for the director, Victor van Aswijk, and to get the right shots at the right time. And then obviously sometimes the, the weather also didn't play its part and you have to go back the next day. And, and to have that beautiful light which we captured in the film, uh, most of the images that we shoot, the film was early in the morning before sunrise, we were on site when the sun came up or then very late in the afternoon. So, so it's a very long, hard working process for the film and then you've got all the shots for the film and then you have to add the music which gives the atmosphere to the film. And then you have to add the voice, which explain how the artist thinks and how does he go about to create the work and what's the reason for creating it. And I think that, that's the process that we ran the film and, and it took us eventually almost a period of, of two years, of which many of it is obviously editing on the film. And I think eventually the end product, Sculpting This Earth, by the award-winning director, Victor van Aslich, and I think the film itself is an artwork on its own. Now, it's easy for me to do the works in nature, and it's beautiful and it's wonderful, but it, if it doesn't be put in the right way or sequence in the film with the right music, 
the perfect silences, the perfect music that comes in softly, then the film wouldn't be such a huge success as we believe as it is at the moment and we wish that people will experience it that way for the first launch this coming weekend, as you mentioned earlier. I can tell you straight on, just from the snippets and uh, just gauging the reaction here in studio, um, it is absolutely everything that you've just described and it's hitting the mark. But uh, just uh, finally, um, you know, what is the significance of the film's premiere being held at Rebeck Valley and uh, also with regard to Solo Studios Intimate Art Encounters uh, where it will be aired, what can those who decide to attend expect? Yes, yes. Well, I think the significance for me, and, and I think um, for the director, Victor van Hasslich, and there, there's been a handful of films made about artists that do similar work than I do, but they're mostly from America and Europe. So this is the first time that, uh, that a full-length 95-minute film has been made about a land artist from the Southern Hemisphere. And I think the difference between that and the other films is we work with a different kind of landscape. You work with different light, you work with, with all things that's different than what you would find in the Northern Hemisphere. And I think that's really important for us. And through that, we hope that it will attract a lot of attention from the European market. And what made it so beautiful is that uh, the world premiere of the film, the first screenings will be this Friday, Saturday and Sunday in Rubia Castile. And the wonderful man that made it possible for us, that, that gave us the money, to make this film and to be full time, permanently for two years busy working on this, he's actually living in Ruby Castile, where the Solo Studios Art Festival is happening this week. So this this weekend. So it is just appropriate that the launch, the very first launch to the public, then must be in his hometown. And we're very happy to do it that way. And from there, hopefully, we will then promote the film and screen it in all kinds of different places and hopefully to art festivals around the world. Well, Stradom, thank you so much for giving us your time this morning. And uh, you don't need luck. It is absolutely everything. And uh, hoping many more people will actually get to see the full version of it. But thank you so much, uh, internationally acclaimed artist Stradom van der Merwe there. And what or inspiring work there. Let me say goodbye and hopefully I'm not sure if we can, but if we can play you out with those visuals, this is how you want to start your day. This is absolutely soothing and, whoa, absolutely mesmerizing as well. This work by Straight on Fanamerva 